The issue of Holy Communion in the hand has resurfaced, and many Catholics are deeply concerned about the horrific stats regarding the sharply declining belief in our Lord's real presence in the Holy Eucharist. Is it possible that the implemented change a few decades ago on how we may receive our Lord has something to do with this? There may be many reasons for the heartbreaking decline in belief in the Real Presence. However, the Latin axiom Lex Orandi Lex Credenti must point to the major cause. As we pray, so we believe. This is closely linked to Lex Credendi, Lex Vivendi, which means as we believe, so we live. This came from the saying by Prosper of Aquitaine from the 5th century Ut legem credenti lex statuat supplicandi. This means that the law of praying establishes the law of believing. We do not receive communion in the hand because when the priest puts the communion in our hands and then we receive it, they are bound to be crumbs in our hands and then we put our hands to our side and the crumbs fall on the floor and then that is each crumb is not just is not just a piece of our Lord but is the whole body blood soul and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ which is landing on the floor to be trodden underfoot because your hands aren't consecrated keep communion the tongue not in the hands because Jesus is so holy and we must respect him because our hands aren't anointed with the holy oils. I receive communion in the tongue and not in the hands because I do not feel that I am worthy to touch my God who created me and who made himself into a piece of bread for me and only a priest with consecrated hands may touch him. How we pray and what we pray will affect what we believe. What we believe will have its effect on how we live. And it does not require much thought to see how it then follows that how we live affects whether we spend eternity in heaven or hell. Let us look at what happened in the early church. Those who point to the early church as a way to justify receiving our Lord in the hand have only a small piece of the truth. It is true that the Holy Eucharist was received by Christians in the hand, but do we know the reason for this? St. Basil confirms that communion in the hand did happen, but it is very clear that this practice was only allowed under certain circumstances. He states the conditions as being 1. Under times of persecution, where no priest is present. 2. For hermits and ascetics in the wilderness who do not have priests. Here we see that these are exceptional circumstances and definitely not the norm. A common argument that those in favor of communion in the hand use is a quote from St. Cyril. When thou goest to receive communion, go not with thy wrists extended, nor with thy fingers separated, but placing thy left hand as a throne for thy right, which is to receive so great a king, and in the hollow of the palm receive the body of Christ, saying, Amen. This quote is found in the Catechesis Mystagogica, one lecture of a group of five which are highly debated and possibly not authentic. There are manuscripts first that do not attribute these five lectures to St. Cyril, and it is therefore not a solid argument to use to support the communion in the hand position. According to Liber Pontificalis, St. Sixtus was a Roman. He ruled the church in the time of Emperor Hadrian. Pope Sixtus I decreed that the sacred vessels should not be touched except by the clergy. This is one of several ordinances attributed to the early popes regarding the sacredness of the ceremonial vessels. There are also substantiated quotes from Pope St. Gregory the Great and Pope St. Leo the Great where we see how they were witnesses 
to the practice of receiving our Lord on the tongue. These are far more compelling. The following quotes also speak to the faithful not touching the sacred host. St. Thomas Aquinas said that out of reverence towards the sacrament, the Holy Eucharist, nothing touches it but what is consecrated. Hence the corporal and the chalice are consecrated and likewise the priest's hands for touching the sacrament. The Council of Trent concluded that the fact that only the priest gives Holy Communion with his consecrated hands is an apostolic tradition. Today a key document that speaks to the distribution of Holy Communion in the hands is the instruction of the Sacred Congregation for Divine Worship, Memorali Domini. This document was issued at the direction of Paul VI. The document came about as in the years immediately following Vatican II. The practice of receiving communion in the hand became a common practice in many countries. This was a liturgical abuse which was prevalent in countries already dealing with doctrinal problems regarding the Holy Eucharist, namely Belgium, Holland, France and Germany. As the Holy See was not able to stop this abuse, a decision was made to consult all the bishops on this question. The majority of bishops expressed their opposition to the introduction of this practice. Memorali Domini acknowledged this majority opposition and stated that the universal norm for receiving Holy Communion is to receive our Lord on the tongue, including profound reasons for this. Memorali Domini also consented that the bishops' conferences of those areas where the abuse was already occurring could request an indult for communion in the hand. This only if the bishops were able to achieve a vote of two-thirds majority in favour of requesting it. It is also very clear in the text of the instruction that the traditional and universal discipline of the Church is that the faithful receive our Lord, fully present in the Holy Eucharist, on the tongue. Firstly because it is based on a centuries-old tradition, but especially because it expresses and signifies the reverent respect of the faithful towards the Holy Eucharist. And furthermore, it avoids the danger of profaning the Eucharistic species. The two forms are not shown to be equal in this document. Receiving the Holy Eucharist on the tongue is preferred and the recommended way. Communion on the hand is permitted. However, certain precautions need to be observed, such as checking to see if any fragments of the host remain on the palm of the hand. In the beginning, the criteria governing the request for the faithful to receive the Holy Eucharist on the hand was followed. Then. Many, if not most, dioceses were requesting this, even where this was not necessary. It is important to remember that even where the indult is granted, the bishop does not have to automatically apply this. There are many cases where bishops have prohibited the distribution of communion in the hand in their respective dioceses. In Redemptiona Sacramentum 91, we see that if there is any danger of profanation, Holy Communion should not be distributed to the faithful in the hand. Yet many of the faithful are unaware of the requirement to check their hands for fragments of the host. The other important reference, in addition to Memorali Domini, is Redemptionis Sacramentum 92. Here we learn of the right of the faithful to receive communion in the tongue and also kneeling. We receive the Holy Eucharist on our tongue because this shows reverence. This is the body, blood, soul and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our hands have not been consecrated to hold and handle the body of Jesus, whilst a priest has had his hands anointed at his ordination. This also ensures that the sacred host is entirely consumed, as opposed to people pocketing the host to keep it as a souvenir, or God forbid, something worse. The receiving of the host on the tongue also symbolizes us being fed with heavenly food that is offered by the priest in persona Christi for the salvation of the laity. In a certain sense, it humbles us before the majesty and greatness of God who is coming to dwell in us with His body, blood, soul and divinity, thus bringing our bodies into subjection by us kneeling. Kneeling at the communion rail can also signify our sinfulness. It symbolizes the line between heaven and earth. 
it is clear that the Catholic Church therefore prefers that the faithful receive our blessed Lord at kneeling and on the tongue, while only permitting reception standing and on the hand. Why then do we still have so many priests who are angered at one of the faithful receiving the Holy Eucharist kneeling and on the tongue? This abuse seems to be found in the Novus Order Rite, as at the traditional Latin Mass, the faithful are not allowed to touch the Sacred Host. This does not mean that all Novus Order Catholics receive on their hand, but sadly most children must make their First Holy Communion being taught to receive our Lord in their hands. Cardinal Robert Sarab, the Vatican's most senior liturgy official, writes in an introduction to his book about communion practices. We can understand how the most insidious diabolical attack consists in trying to extinguish faith in the Eucharist, sowing errors and favoring an unsuitable manner of receiving it. Truly the war between Michael and his angels on one side and Lucifer on the other continues in the heart of the faithful. Satan's target is the sacrifice of the Mass and the real presence of Jesus in the consecrated host. These are powerful yet controversial words from His Eminence and he continues by asking why the faithful would stand instead of kneel when receiving their King of Kings. He says, why this attitude of lack of submission to the signs of God? This time of the coronavirus has been used to strengthen the belief that it is safer and more hygienic for the faithful to receive our Lord in the hand. And in many dioceses we see the right of the faithful to receive our Lord on the tongue being forbidden. All this while there is much research that states the opposite. Even without the clear evidence that points to tradition, Surely if we truly believe that we are receiving our Lord and God, the creator of the universe, we should fall to our knees in reverence and awe. The reason I take the Eucharist kneeling on the tongue is that when we see the Lord, we should be kneeling and awing before Him. Also, if we were not to take it in the tongue, it would be more likely desecration is caused to the body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord. I, as a Roman Catholic, will only receive communion kneeling and on the tongue because I truly believe that our Lord is found body, blood, soul, and divinity in every particle of the Blessed Sacrament, and I will not allow any particles to be left on my hands, wiped on my clothes, or dropped on the floor. Receiving on the hand didn't start until right about Vatican II, and before that it has always been done on the tongue. Our hands as lay people are not consecrated, only the priests are. So I receive on the tongue out of reverence for God. All through my, you know, life as a Catholic, um, I have seen a lot of abuses in the mass itself. And I have seen a lot of people handled our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. When I was a young adult, my faith in the true presence of Jesus began to deepen and my formation and understanding began to grow and it was then that I noticed that some people were receiving the Eucharist on their tongue as opposed to on the hand as was what I was accustomed to doing and from that moment on I began to receive the Eucharist on my tongue which made so much sense to me given my my deeper understanding um, it was a way to prepare myself and to have the right interior disposition to receive Jesus. And it was a wonderful outward sign that has been practiced for centuries. It's, it's ideally people who have 
consecrated hands who are supposed to handle the host, such as uh, priests and bishops. So the lay people were not actually meant to be uh, handling the, the host, so it's better to receive uh, communion on the tongue. It's that when you receive on the hands, there's going to be particles which we believe to be the fullness of the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. There's going to be particles left on your hands, and there's going to be particles that could fall on your ground once you're walking back. So it shows disrespect to Christ. The second reason I don't receive on the hand is because all of our grandfathers and every saint in history, they've always received on the tongue, and I don't think they've been doing something wrong. I think that receiving kneeling and on the tongue is the perfect way to show reverence to the Eucharist, and I think that's why every saint in history and all of our fathers have received kneeling and on the tongue. I find it a lot more reverent to receive Jesus kneeling and on the tongue. As a layperson, I believe that I should not be allowed to touch the Eucharist as my hands have not been consecrated. I receive communion on my tongue and kneeling because I do not feel worthy enough to touch our Lord. And I feel that kneeling is more reverent than standing in front of the true presence of God in the Eucharist. When the angel of Portugal appeared to the three children of Fatima, we read that he was holding a chalice in his hands with a host above it from which some drops of blood were falling into the sacred vessel. The angel left the chalice and hopes suspended in the air and prostrated himself upon the ground with the children and prayed the following prayer with them three times. Most Holy Trinity, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, I adore you profoundly and I offer you the most precious body, blood, soul and divinity of Jesus Christ present in all the tabernacles in the world in reparation for the outrages, sacrileges and indifference with which he himself is offended and through the infinite merits of his most sacred heart and the immaculate heart of Mary I beg of you the conversion of poor sinners. Amen. The angel along with the children prostrated themselves before the blessed sacrament. Who are we to stand and to touch him with our hands? We see many examples of inconsistent reverence in the Novus Order Rite. On Holy Thursday, the congregation are kneeling in reverence and adoration as the priest passes holding the blessed sacrament under the humeral veil. Yet on Easter Sunday, it is acceptable to stand and to touch our Lord. Altar servers are not allowed to touch the bishops, mitre and crozier, yet they may touch the sacred host. When receiving the Eucharist on the hand, studies have shown time and time again that fragments fall to the ground and are crushed by the feet of the very people who should be adoring Him. He is profaned in his own house. A door too left open for people to leave Mass with our Lord and to possibly be desecrated in black masses. St. Maximilian Colby said that if angels could be jealous of men, they would be for one reason, Holy Communion. The angels prostrate themselves before our Lord in Heaven. Why don't we? It must be the priority of every Catholic to protect our Lord in the Holy Eucharist from the possibility of fragments and any other profanations. We end with these words from Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI, then Cardinal Ratzinger. A liturgy no longer familiar with kneeling would be sick at the core. Let us pray the prayer that the Angel of Peace taught the three children of Fatima. My God, I believe, I adore, I hope, and I love you. I beg for pardon for those who do not believe, do not adore, do not hope, and do not love you. Amen. And remember, fight the good fight and keep the faith.